Hey everyone, so as you all probably know, 3.11 didn't really add all that much gameplay to Star Citizen. So for this video, I just wanted to go back and take a look at one of my favorite activities in Star Citizen, which is trading. So this is going to be more of a discussion type video and won't have as many tips as my usual ones. So if you want a summary of what's going on, trading is kind of back to normal right now. There aren't really any crazy ways to make a ton of profit because there's no high value commodities that are in crazy supply like there was with the Laronite rush at Ariel. But also 3.11 has made the servers a bit more stable than they have been in previous patches, so it's not a bad time to trade either. The only thing you need to worry about is people who are still trying to get the helmet for the event who might want to get some easy kills. But if you're in a caterpillar, it's going to take a while to kill you using a gladius, so as long as you're not landing on an open pad like at Portal Lazar, you probably don't have to worry too much about that. So getting into this video, I've been doing a couple of the old routes that I enjoyed doing, and I've tried some new ones just to see how things are. And that's one of the things I really like about Trade, is that you can go and visit a variety of locations in Star Citizen, and that variety is one of Star Citizen's strong points, so it's a really good way to enjoy the game. So one of the new commodities that I tried that I haven't really messed with much before are medical supplies. So in the past I haven't really bothered trading these because the time to buy them and the time to sell them is often very long, and that means your cargo is at risk for a while if there's a lot of 30ks. However, since it seems like in this patch you're a lot less likely to get a 30k, I've been doing a few of these. They're still not my favorite because there is quite a bit of waiting to buy and sell medical supplies because the refresh rate can be pretty low depending on where you go to sell it, but you make a pretty decent profit on these. And if you want to get into trading and you don't want to have to go and fly to places to find the prices yourself, I've linked a very useful website in the description where you can put in your ship and where you want to trade and it'll show you different commodity prices. These aren't always 100% accurate because the prices do change in-game as people are buying and selling stuff, but it'll give you a good idea of how much you're going to make and how much money you'll need to spend. I've also done a few runs of the old dependable titanium run from Ariel to Hurston, and that works just as well as ever. But like I said, there's still not a ton of Laronite available, so it's not as profitable as it has been at some points. One thing I did notice while doing this is I hadn't really done that much trading since this new flight model, which isn't really all that new at this point, got put into the game, and I really thought the Caterpillar would be affected more negatively than it has been. Don't get me wrong, it's still pretty slow in atmosphere, but it's not that hard to control. You just have to be kind of ginger with your inputs, but it'll eventually get there. However, that brings me to one of the other things that I wanted to talk about in this video, which is the chance that the Hercules Starlifter might get added into the game later this year. So if you don't know, the Starlifter is another ship from Crusader, who is also the manufacturer of the Star Runner, which is the medium large size ship that's coming out soon, and you've definitely heard about that one. Everyone is really excited for that. However, with the progress pictures they've been sharing for that ship, they've also been showing quite a lot of progress pictures for the Starlifter, which is the bigger cargo ship that Crusader also makes. I really like this ship, and I think it'll be a lot of fun to fly. The Caterpillar isn't that bad to fly in atmosphere, but this ship is basically designed to fly in atmosphere because it's a military ship and it's designed to drop vehicles off into combat, so that means it has to perform well in atmosphere. Also, the C2 variant has more cargo capacity than the Caterpillar, so I think this will be a great ship to fly around and do some trading in. So while this is definitely not a guarantee that we'll be seeing this ship anytime soon, I do think there's a good chance that we'll be seeing it before the end of the year, and if you enjoy trading, that's definitely going to be a ship that you want to look at. So yeah, that would definitely be a nice surprise to have coming up because it has been a little lackluster in terms of content updates. But yeah, overall trading isn't all that different now than it has been before, except it's a little bit less risky because it seems like there's less 30ks this patch, especially since they're focusing more, it seems like, on bug fixes this patch. And I'm really excited to see what they will do with trade in the future. I'm looking forward to cargo running missions, which hopefully will be a little bit less stressful than running your own cargo, that way you're not on the hook for so much money if you lose all of it. And I'm excited to see what sort of gameplay that they use the new cargo decks for once they finally design some gameplay loops for that location. It was kind of a bummer to have those added into the game without really any functionality at all, but I'd rather have them add something that's polished than rushed. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was a little short, but like I said, there's not been all that much new stuff going on in Star Citizen, so I just kind of went back to the basics. So I wish you luck with the 30Ks if you decide to do any trading yourself, and thanks for watching.